Good morning. Good morning to my KDM, my family. Good morning. God is a good God. Yes, he is. He woke us up this morning, started us on our way. God is a good God. We welcome you, you, and you. We welcome our, our YouTube family, our Central America family. We welcome you to have an experience with us today in God. So we want you to clap your hands. We want you to get a best amen in your mouth. We want you to get a hallelujah praise in your mouth this morning. Why? Because he is good and he's worthy to be praised. Come on, y'all, clap your hands for Jesus this morning because he is worthy. He woke us up this morning, started us on our way. He didn't have to do it, but he did. God is a good God. Yes, he is. God is a marvelous God. Yes, he is. In God, we trust. We trust God this morning. We trust him when we don't see it. We trust him when we don't understand it. We're going to raise our voices this morning and say hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is a good God. Yes, he is. If you believe that, put your blessed hands together. Hallelujah. This is a good day that the Lord has made. This is another opportunity. Whatever you didn't get right yesterday, you got a chance and an opportunity to get it right today. You have a chance and an opportunity today to raise your voice just to say thank you. Just to say hallelujah, hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. I want to read you one of the promises of God coming from Jeremiah 33 and three. Call unto me and I would answer you and show you great and mighty things which you know, which you know not. Come on here now, call upon him. We come to call upon the Lord this morning. We come to pull on him this morning. Why? Because he is our great God. He is our King of King and the Lord of Lord. He is our strength when we are weak. He is our provider. He is the one that know all, see all, and is all. So to go and get it twisted, he is all. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The great I am is all. And that's all you need to know. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We can take that to the bank. We can take money to the bank. But that's better than money. <laughs> that is better than money. That's better than a piece of stock because he is the stock. Hallelujah. Because he is the way maker. He is the one that provides and gives us provision. Amen. 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 Also, you ready for our experience today? with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So we come, we know we're in church, but this is the atmosphere of church today. Amen. So we ain't gonna, we're not gonna do it no less. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So we gonna get things started with prayer because prayer changes things. Prayer opens the doors for opportunity. Prayer heals, prayer protects, amen, amen. So we gonna open up prayer with prayer with Minister Val, and after Minister Val, we're going to have our psalmist of the day, Minister Kelly, and then after Minister Kelly, I'll be right back at you. So don't go anywhere, because I'm coming back. Amen? Amen. Amen. Minister Val. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless God for the word that, that you gave the encouragement this morning. I'm going to be coming from Psalms 23, and it says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still water. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. 
Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Father God. We welcome you this morning, Lord God. We welcome you, welcome you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord God, hallelujah. Lord, we come to give you the honor. We come to lift you up. Hallelujah, for you are the Lord of lords and the King of kings. You are our shepherd this morning, Father God. And Father God, we come for no other reason, Lord God, but to lay aside every week, Lord God. Hallelujah, to give you the glory and to give you the honor. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, for you are our protector this morning, Lord God. You are our provider, Lord God. You are our Alpha and Omega, Lord God. You is our all in all, Lord God. Everything that we need this morning, Lord God, it is in you, Lord God, for everything you do, Lord God, you're doing well, Father God. We thank you, Lord God. It is you, Lord God, who heals the brokenhearted, Lord God. It is you, Lord God, that can cause the blind to see, Lord God. It is you, Lord God, who opens up the ears, Lord God, for the deaf to hear, Lord God. It is you, Lord God, that is more than able to restore, Lord God, to lift, Lord God. For you is the lifter of our heads this morning, Lord God. And nothing that we can ever go through, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. We can't go through anything, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. And be defeated, Lord God, because we serve a God. Hallelujah. She is more than able, Lord God, to lift us on this morning, Lord God. So this is why, Lord God, hallelujah, we come, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. Anticipate. Lord God, the words of today, Lord God, we pray, Lord God, hallelujah for the woman of God, Lord God, who's going to bring forth the word today, Lord God, we know, Lord God, that she is anointed and appointed, Lord God, we know, Lord God, that she's going to give, Lord God, what you say to give to your people today, Lord God, hallelujah, we, Father God, open our ears, Lord God, to hear what you have to say on today, for it is needed, Lord God, we thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for what you're going to do on this line, Lord God. We thank you for our leaders, Lord God. We just thank you, Lord God, hallelujah, for your protection and your provision. We thank you for all that you have done, Lord God, this weekend, Lord God, hallelujah. I lift my hands to you, Lord God, to give you the glory and to honor, Lord God, to see the brokenhearted, Lord God, be healed, Lord God, to see your people to be restored, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. You do great and marvelous things, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. You are still God and you sit on the throne. Hallelujah, Lord God. And we bless you this morning, Lord God. Hallelujah, we bless you, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God, because you is the provider, Lord God. You is the way maker, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah, Father God. So for that, Lord God, we just give you glory and honor this morning, Lord God. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We give you glory on today, Lord. We honor your name on today, Lord. You are our Lord and you are our King. Hallelujah. We lift your name up. I on today as our Savior, oh God. Hallelujah. We lift your name up. Because you're the only name, oh God, that's above every name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you today. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I love you, Lord. And I live my voice to worship you. Oh, my soul, rejoice. Take joy, my King. And what you hear, and let it be a sweet, sweet sound 
and your Hallelujah. I love you, Lord. And I lift my voice to worship you, oh, my soul. Rejoice, take joy, my King. And what you hear, and let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to earth. Shall you, oh my soul, rejoice, take joy, my King, hallelujah, and what you hear, and let it be a sweet, sweet sound. In your ear, we exalt thee, we exalt thee, hallelujah, we exalt thee, oh Lord, we Thank you, Jesus. We exalt thee. Hallelujah. We exalt thee. And let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. We exalt thee. Oh, we exalt thee. Hallelujah. Oh, we exalt thee. Oh, Lord. We exalt thee. Hallelujah. Oh, we exalt thee. Thank you, Jesus. We exalt Oh, Lord, and let it be a sweet, sweet sound, and let it be a sweet, sweet sound, and let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. I love you. Hallelujah. I love you. I love you, Lord, today because you cared for me in such a special way. That's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. My heart, hallelujah. My mind, Lord, my soul belongs to you, to you. You pay the price for me. Yeah. Way back on Calvary. That's why I praise you i lift you up and i magnify your name that's why my heart is filled with praise my heart my mind my soul belongs to you to you you pay the price for me, 
way back on Calvary. That's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled. Hallelujah. That's why my heart is filled. Hallelujah, Jesus. That's why my heart is filled. That's why my heart is filled. Hallelujah, Jesus. That's why my heart is filled with praise. My heart, hallelujah, my mind, my soul belongs to you. You pay the price for me way back on Calvary. That's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Hallelujah. Our hearts are filled with praise today, oh God. We love you on today, oh God. You first loved us, oh God. Hallelujah. We love you, oh God. We honor you on today. Hallelujah. That's why our hearts are filled with praise. That's why our hearts are filled with praise. That's why our heart is filled with praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Our hearts. Hallelujah. Our minds. Our soul belongs. To you, you paid the price for us. Hallelujah. Way back on Calvary, that's why we praise you. We lift you up and we magnify your name. That's why our heart is filled with praise. Hallelujah. Our hearts forever is filled with praise. Hallelujah. It's filled with honor. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. All the glory belongs to you today, oh God. It all belongs to you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 He is worthy to be praised. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Listen, believers can't sing that song because if they haven't yet accepted Lord as their Lord and personal Savior, they can't sing that song. But believers can sing that song to the roof. I love you, Lord. And I lift my voice to worship you. Oh, my soul, I give praise to my Lord. I honor my Lord. See, the world don't honor God. So we that believers can honor the Lord. We thank the Lord for all the things that he has done and is doing and will continue to do for us. So with a loud voice, I might can't hear you, but God can hear you. Tell the Lord, I love you, Lord. I love you for all the great things that you have done for me. My soul cries out, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I praise God, hallelujah. Why? Because he is worthy. He is the great I am. He is the all possible. He is the all knowing. He is the keeper of our soul. He is. He is and there's no other. There's no other God like King Jehovah. There is no other God. So that's why we can lift our voice. That's why we can praise him. That's why we can say hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a mighty good God we serve. Angels bow before him. 
heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. We serve a great God. We serve a God that is a healer, that is a protector, that is a sustainer, that is a mind regulator and a heart fixer. He the only one that can mend a broken heart. Amen. Amen. He is the keeper of our soul. Amen. And we thank God and we give him all the praise and, and we give him all the honor. We praise God this morning. We can raise our voice to the sky. And if it, that's all right, that's all right. Make the devil mad and he'll get out of our way. We come to make him mad this morning. In the name of Jesus, he gonna have to flee. He gonna have to get out of here. He can't stay where the power of God is. So we ain't come to entertain him in the name of Jesus. So we thank you. We thank you for God. He is a great God and he is our keeper. And now I'm telling you, if God can't keep us, we can't be kept. So we look into God because he is our keeper. And so if you're looking for him to be a way maker and you got things before God and you know, Lord, only God could do it. Don't give up. Keep pushing forward and keep praying. Lay it at his feet. Because God is the only one that can deliver. I'm telling you, he is the only one that can deliver your soul and give you the desire of your hearts, even your wants. So we keep it before God and we won't step down and we're not going to change our minds either. Amen. 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 So now I want you to prepare your heart and your minds for the word of God this morning. Amen. We looking to hear a word from the God, uh, from the Lord this morning. So we ask you to open up your heart and your ears and give God, ask God for a mind to understand. Amen. 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 So we ask you to point your hands towards evangelist Lisa. Y'all know she can bring the word. And it is a word in her mouth for God's people. Point your hands to evangelist Lisa and tell her, don't come down off of the mountain to God. Tell her to come down off of the mountain. Amen. Amen. And preach the word, evangelist. Preach the word. We've got to go back to preaching it in season and out of season. We got to go back to preaching the unadulterated, uncut, unfiltered word of God. And we got to make the devil mad in doing it. Amen. Amen. Our evangelist Lisa. I turn it over to you and don't come down until God tell you to come down. Amen. Amen. In Jesus name, Evangelist Lisa. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to the name of God. Glory to the lamb of God who was slain. Hallelujah. Look, my voice is a little bit, uh, it, it's barely holding on because I love the Lord so much. I've been praising and worshiping him all weekend. Hallelujah. Since uh, uh, since Thursday night, I've been lifting my voice to the glory of the Lord. Amen. So and in doing so for so many days, amen, my voice is a little bit low and shaky and, you know, it, it, it is what it is, but it shall not stop me because I have a voice still. And there is still sound amplifying out of it. I shall still declare the works of the Lord, declare the word of the Lord. Amen. And still give him praise, honor, and glory. Amen. Amen. It is a blessing to be here to share the word of the Lord with you this morning. I give honor to our pastors, Apostle Jimmy Thompson and Prophetess Natalie Thompson for just entrusting me with the word of God to the people of God and entrusting the Holy Spirit that is in me and trusting the Jesus that is in me to steward the gift of God well and to handle his people well. Amen. Amen. The word of the Lord this morning, we're not going to be long today. The word of the Lord this morning is going to come from two places, uh, Acts 10, 38 and John 14 and 12. Amen. The title of this message is Empowered for a Purpose because we have greater works to do. Empowered for a purpose because we have greater works to do. Acts 10, 38 says, 
and how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And John 14 and 12 says, I tell you the truth. If anyone believes in me, Jesus said, will anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done and even greater works because I am going to be with the father. Amen. Hallelujah. We all know that we are living in a time and space when the church of Jesus Christ needs the power of the Holy Spirit like never before. We And the believers that make up the body of Christ, that make up the church of Jesus Christ, need to be empowered by the Holy Spirit so that we can do what we have been designed and ordained to do, which is to advance the kingdom, advance and expand the kingdom of God. When Jesus was uh, going through life and, and going about his ministry, he had selected disciples and he had chosen 12 disciples to walk with him that he would teach the law, the, the ways of the kingdom of God and would teach them the word and would show them, be a living example of the word made flesh for them. So that when he would leave, he said he had to go so that the comforter could come to show them great and mighty things. He had to show them and uh, teach them and appoint them and dispense power through the Holy Spirit to them so that they could do the works to expand and advance the kingdom so that they could go about preaching the gospel, the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, so that they could heal the sick, raise the dead, open blind eyes, lead other people to, to come into the kingdom of God to believe, uh, believe in Jesus Christ. We know that we all have, have come and made a decision to accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We have all decided not just to accept him as our personal Savior, but also to take up that mantle and mandate as well, to advance the kingdom of God, to go about preaching the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, unlike today, we have a lot of people in local assemblies only preaching the good news of Jesus Christ and not really fully expanding the kingdom of God so much in the local assembly because there is also work outside of the local assembly. There, The harvest is not inside the four walls of the building, but the harvest is outside. The harvest is where you work. The harvest is in your community. The harvest is within the city. The harvest is within the state. The harvest is within the hedges and the highways. Wherever we go, we must be able to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. So all of us have the same mandate and the same commandment to go ye therefore in all the world, preach the gospel in all the areas of the world, in Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the world. That means we're to preach the gospel in places that some people will never even go. We are to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ everywhere. Just because Jesus did not say preach it on your job doesn't mean you don't preach it to people on your job. Just because the Bible didn't say preach it to, to your next door neighbor doesn't mean you doesn't preach it to your neighbor or to your family member. Whoever will hear, wherever you are, there are many places that we go if we're just going out to dinner or going out to a store, there are many places that we can share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And Jesus has empowered us. He has given us the Holy Spirit. Now that he has ascended back into heaven, he has, descent the, he has sent the comfort, the Holy Spirit, which only came upon the disciples before Jesus left. But now the Holy Spirit, we all know, indwells within us. Not only does the Spirit of the Lord come upon us too, but it's like it, not just come upon us, but he's also in us. It's not so much as a coming upon. I like to say it's more of a coming alive in us. It's more of an awakening in us. Amen. And when we don't activate the Holy Spirit within us, to me, it's like dry having a car, fully gassed up, engine fully intact. 
you get in it, you do not and put the key in the ignition and turn it to activate it so you can't go anywhere. You're not moving forward. So instead of doing that, you just look at the car, you bypass it, and you go look for another means by which to get to where you want to go. Too many of us are looking at other people to help us to get where we want to go. Too many people are looking for other means and other measures to which we are to move forward without seeking God, without activating what is in us. We want to run to people, want to run for prophets. I call them prophecy junkies. They want to run from here to there to there to here just to get a word from God, from a prophet or from a man or woman of God when they can get the word of God for themselves if they would simply activate Holy Spirit, talk to Holy Spirit who is down on the inside of them. Open up the word of God for themselves. Open up the, the real waters of life and be refreshed and ask Holy Spirit to illuminate the word of God in within those pages of the word of God for us. Instead, they want to go and instead of getting in the car, putting the key in the ignition and turning it on, they want to go and call an Uber and let somebody else drive them. They want to go and, and catch a bus and let the bus take them from point A to point B, leaving their car fully gassed up, fully operational and parked outside of their house, never using it. What's the purpose of having it if you're not going to use it? What's the purpose of going to get in it and look pretty in it and never put the key in the ignition and start it up and put your get foot on the accelerator? You ain't going nowhere if you don't put it in drive. We have work to do. The body of Christ has become complacent and we have become content with letting someone else do the work for us. Let someone else read the scriptures and exegete the passage in the scriptures. And then can we just show up at church on Sunday and let somebody else tell us what the word of God says. And we don't go and fact check it for ourselves. We don't even go and read it for ourselves. So we, many of people are listening on TikTok, Facebook, social media, all these other things. I keep saying this because it's true. We're looking at everyone else, listening to all other voices and, and for the answers to our solutions. When the answer to the solution is lies within us, when we have the Holy Spirit within us, when we have the word of God in us, we already have the solution. All we have to do is to tap into the resource, which is already inside of us, to pull forth the solution or ask him, what is the solution? What am I supposed to be doing? What are we supposed to be doing? The, the power of the Holy Spirit was on Jesus, but it manifested very visible miracles, signs, and wonders. We all say that we are looking for miracle signs and wonders. Do they still exist in the land? The word of God tells us that miracle signs and wonders follow them that believe. It doesn't say it follows the preacher that believe. It doesn't say it follows the apostle that believe. It doesn't say it just follows the prophet that believe. It follows them that believe, whether you have a title or not. If you believe in the word of God, miracle signs and wonders can even come through you. We have to know the power that we have down within us. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead is also active and inside of us. So if it, that same power can raise Jesus from the dead, what can it do for us? Jesus said, greater work shall we do when we are living and operating and empowered by the Holy Spirit, which is down on the inside of us. Why do we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit? It is for a purpose. Being filled with the Holy Spirit, one, enables us as believers to live a life that is full and to in the abundant life. Because Jesus said he came that we may have life and have it more abundantly. More abundantly. Ab abundantly is something that's tangible and we can see. You know, we, we have our minds can think about what abundant look like. But Jesus said more abundantly. It's even beyond what we can think. He says <laughs> beyond what we could think, ask, or imagine even. Amen? More abundantly. And so that we can fulfill, we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit so that we can fulfill God's purpose for us here in the earth realm. What is the purpose? I said we are to go into all the parts of the world, preaching the good news of the gospel to anyone who would listen. It is also so that believers can be empowered to overcome sin and to live victoriously. 
We cannot overcome sin on our own. We all know it. Many of us, before we actually surrendered our lives to Jesus, we said we were going to give our life. We start hearing the word. Oh, I'll, I'll start going to church and give my life to Christ when I get myself together, meaning when I stop sinning. But all of us know that we couldn't do it on our own because if we did, there would have been no need for Jesus to come. If we could do this thing on our own, we could overcome sin. If we could stop sinning, the, the word of God tells us we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. So sin is in us. And because it's in us is what we were born into. It takes Jesus and the Holy Spirit, the endowment, the empowerment of the Holy Spirit to overcome the sin. Amen. We can't do it on our own. It takes Holy Spirit to help us do that and to live life victoriously in Jesus Christ. Jesus, like I said, he said that he come that we would have life and have more abundantly. He came that we, he has already given us the victory because he has already given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. And because we already have it, it is resident within us. All we have to do is activate it. Activate Holy Spirit. Be empowered by Holy Spirit so that we can live victoriously. We also need to be filled with the Holy Spirit because it helps us to produce the fruit of the Spirit. It helps us to produce love, patience, kindness, gentleness, meekness, humility, self-control, all of those things without being filled with the Holy Spirit, we cannot love like we're supposed to. We know we are no longer patient. We know when we are low on our, our uh, refreshing of the Holy Spirit, our, we, get, we get agitated easily. And we our kindness isn't the way it, where it should be. We're not showing mercy the way we should. It takes being filled, being refreshed, being hydrated with the living water, being hydrated with the Holy Spirit, and being anointed to and, and empowered by the Holy Spirit so that we can produce the fruit of the Spirit even when we don't feel like it. It doesn't say we have to feel like being kind. We just have to be kind. Holy Spirit will help us to show mercy, whether or not we feel like being merciful to someone or, or they don't deserve, we feel like they don't deserve the mercy or they don't deserve the love. We can love them and show them and give them mercy anyway. We can love the unlovable. Being filled with the Holy Spirit causes us to have supernatural love, the love that transcends the, the, the conditional love. It gives us the, the ability to love supernaturally and to grow farther and deeper, not just in love with others, but in love with Jesus. Because when we are in love with Jesus, who is love, God who is love, we can then, when we learn how to love him and receive his love, we then know how to love others, love others better. We get empowered with joy, which is the experience. We get to experience joy in the midst of suffering and in the midst of all of the injustices that are going on. We can still have joy. Not joy that the world gives because the world, the kind of joy that the world produces isn't really joy. It's just happiness. It's temporal. It comes and it goes. It's conditional based on the situation and circumstance and the person. But joy from Jesus the joy that comes from Jesus, the joy that comes from the Lord is something that cannot be shaken. It cannot be taken. And no matter what it is we're going through, the situation may be hard. The situation may be tough. The situation may be grievous, but we can still have joy on the inside of us because it is already in us. It has to come out of us. The song writes that this joy I have, the world didn't give it and the world show can't take it away. This is the kind of joy that we have in Jesus Christ that gets activated when we are full and filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit also gives us guidance, the ability to apprehend Christ's loves and, 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 and to go where we, he wants us to go, to fulfill his plan and his purpose for our day. When we are guided by Holy Spirit, we are surrendering and yielding our will for his. 
our plans for his, the places we want to go for the places he tells us to go. Or if he's tell us just to sit down somewhere and not go anywhere today, we are yielding to the guidance and the leading of Holy Spirit. That is something that happens once we are filled, we are better able to discern whether or not we should go, whether or not we should move, where we should go, what we are to say, who we are to say it to, what, uh, how we are to say it. There are so many things that happen with the guidance of the Holy Spirit when we are it filled up with the Holy Spirit and our discernment is intact, our discernment is sharp and our discernment is keen. When we are also filled with the Holy Spirit, we are able to unify with one another. We are able to be one with one another. We are able to be peaceable with all men and bring unity and be unified in every situation. When there's chaos going on, we can be the one who come in and be the peacemaker and bring unity back to a dysfunctional place. We are the ones who, when we are united with Christ, we can come together with other believers, not not dividing because we have different views and opinions, but be unified one with another so that the body of Christ and the church can move forward and advance. All of us using our gifts, all of us using our talents, all of us using our abilities that God has placed upon us so that the body of Christ can be operational as a whole. The word of God tells us that we are many parts, but one body. Everybody has different gifts. Everyone has different talents. Everyone has this, different abilities, but it takes all of us coming together and we are able to put pride aside and be unified with one another. We are able to put ego aside and work well with another believer. We are able to put our agenda aside for the agenda of God and the advancement of the kingdom. When we are filled and empowered with the Holy Spirit, we receive the empowerment to function as God intended purpose for our life. Whatever that is, if God's purpose for you in this earth is to be a psalmist and sing to the glory of the Lord and to usher in the presence of God wherever you are, then that's what you do. The Holy Spirit will empower you to do that. We can do some things on our own, but doesn't mean it's going to be in either. It does, some of the things that we do on our own does not mean that we're going to get the stamp of approval by from God for it. I think a uh, 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 prophet Cook said at the uh, uh, the Eagles gathering, every church thing ain't a God thing. Every good thing ain't a God thing. Just because we're doing it doesn't mean that God's stamp of approval is on it. We want to make sure we are empowered to and with the ability to function for God's intended purpose, to do exactly what it is he wants us to do and not what we want to do ourselves. The church needs the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit activated and empowered in every believer, in every believer like never before. We are in an era where the signs, wonders, and miracles can really be shown. We are really looking for them. People are looking, but they can come through you. They can come through I. When the disciples were going about doing the work of the ministry, people were amazed because they they some people in the land saw Jesus doing all of the miracles. They saw Jesus doing healing the sick and uh, opening blinded eyes and raising the dead. But then when his disciples began to do it, people the the, people, the Gentiles and the Jews as, as well began to look and say, "Oh my goodness, they can do it too." And even the disciples got excited and said, Lord, even we're called to cast out devils. And when they began to do it, they got excited. Jesus, even the they got uh, uh, even the devils, uh, uh, we got cast out in our name. And, and even the devils responded to us. Jesus said, do not glory in that, but be glory that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. We cannot don't cannot be enamored with the gifts because the gifts and the callings come without repentance. So because the God is going to make good on his gift, if we've been gifted to do something and we are not in right standing with God and you still operating, God's going to make good on the gift, even if your integrity is not intact. And God's also going to show the two. There's going to be a difference in the two. You're going to see the gift in operation. And if you have king discernment also, you're also going to see that the integrity is not intact. This is why we are to look at, we're not to be enamored with gifts 
and enamored because sorcerers do the same thing. The magicians of the time did the same things. When they saw Jesus is the, uh, doing, when, uh, 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 when they saw Joshua was throwing down the rod and, and different things in the world. I'm sorry, Moses throwing down the rod and the uh, the king's sorcerer said, well, my guys can do that too. Theirs did the same thing. We have to make sure that we're not enamored with gifts and with the people who are exuding the gifts of the, of the spirit. We have to make sure that we are looking for God. Make sure that we are looking for the kingdom of God being advanced. Because in this day and age, there are too many people, we've heard yet again this weekend, that there are too many people who are leading people to themselves and not to Jesus. The purpose of us, the purpose of God making good on his gifts and dispensing the gifts and Holy Spirit being at live, active and alive with it is, is to advance the kingdom and to lead people to Jesus, not to lead people to Lisa, not to lead pe people to the prophet, not to lead people to anyone else. It is to lead people to Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We And it tells us we have to seek first the kingdom of God. And all is righteousness and everything will be added when we're leading people to Jesus. And we go with an expectation to see Jesus, to seek the kingdom. Everything that we need is going to show up. Everything that's lacking is going to show up. And then the kingdom of God is going to be advanced and expanded. That is our purpose, to advance and to expand. In Job uh, 26, 13. We see that there, uh, there's a, the Holy Spirit has displayed and continues to display gifts of acts of creation. And there are many di dimensions, I'm going to call them dimensions, of the Holy Spirit. And we want to talk about a few dimensions of the Holy Spirit today. The couple di uh, dimensions of the Holy Spirit we're going to talk about today is the creative dimension. Because the Holy Spirit, God, who is the Holy Spirit and Jesus, created Holy Spirit is very creative. Through the Lord Jesus Christ, though he was, though Jesus was born of a woman, he was made and he was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Mary did not know a man. Therefore, he did not, he was not conceived the usual way that we would be conceived between a man and a woman. We all know that Jesus was conceived by the, Mary was had conceived Jesus by the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit created, took the spirit of God that was in heaven. God decided, God, Holy Spirit, and Jesus all dwelled in heaven together. All one unit. And decided we're going to make man in our own image. And when Jesus decided, so when God started making man, he consulted himself. He consulted Holy Spirit. He consulted Jesus, who was the word of God. So when he began to create, when, when Jesus decided, I'm not going to create Jesus, but when Jesus came and Mary conceived Jesus, although the, uh, he, he was born through this woman, he was still the Holy Spirit who had come upon Mary. She met with the angel of the Lord. The angel of the Lord met her, told her, you're going to conceive a child born of you, and you're going to call his name Jesus. Actually, the angel, angel Gabriel, angel Gabriel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the most high will overshadow you in Luke 1 35. So the Holy One born will be called the son of God. So the physical body of Jesus was like a masterpiece of Holy Spirit. The physical body was created by Holy Spirit, although Jesus and Holy Spirit and God are already one. We can still believe that God is the creative side of Holy Spirit today because not only did they create Jesus, they created man, they created the heavens, the earth, the sun, the moon, the stars. They created the oceans, the beast of, of the field, the birds of the air, the fish and fowl of the sea. Amen. The Holy Spirit's compact. There's also a restorative capacity, capacity to Holy Spirit, a restorative dimension. 
that restorative dimension is Holy Spirit has the ability and the capacity to restore, to, to bring back and bring back into operation everything that was stolen, everything that was killed, everything that was destroyed, everything that was broken down. Holy Spirit is able to put it back together and bring it to restoration once again. Jesus manifested this by when he destroyed the works of the devil through the power of the Holy Spirit. It was the Holy Spirit by which the body of Jesus was raised from the dead and had been laid there for three days and three nights. He still got up and ascended into heaven. Restoration can come. In 1 Peter 3, 18, Christ died for our sins for all, for the righteous and the unrighteous to bring us all to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive by the Spirit. Romans 8, 11 says, if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to our, to your mortal bodies through his spirit who lives in you. Anything about us that seems like it is dying, anything about us that seems like it is dead, whether physically in our bodies, whether it is our, our minds, whether it's our wounds, whether it's our organs that seem to be deteriorating, the Holy Spirit can bring restoration to. There's a, there's a, I call it a destructive part of the Holy Spirit, which is the consuming fire, the Holy Ghost fire come to burn up some things, burn up those things, which we ain't got there yet. Let me, let me, I'm getting ahead of myself. But with the restoration of Holy Spirit, the restoration dimension, even when we call on the blood of Jesus, we use the blood of Jesus for all kinds of things. We use the blood of Jesus to cover, to protect, to restore. We use the oil of the anointing for the same thing. There are tokens that we use. But Holy Spirit also has the capacity to restore. It can restore your dead careers. Anything that is dead, it can bring restoration to the Holy Spirit is like the breath of God is also, it is God, it's the person of God within us. Can bring restoration to your marriage. It can bring restoration to your ministry. It can bring restoration to your finances. It can bring restoration to anything. All we've got to do to activate it and believe. We have to believe by faith. When we place faith in the power of the Holy Spirit, we can see things happen like never before. But we have to believe by faith that it can be done. He promised to restore all the years that the caterpillar and the canker worms had eaten. So whatever is missing out of our lives, whatever has been destroyed or stolen from us can be restored by the power of the Holy Spirit, which is God. It can be restored. There's also a protective capacity or protective dimension. This dimension, the Lord promised that anytime the enemy, the enemies of us will come against us, the spirit of the Lord said he will raise up a standard against it. That is protection by itself. The Holy Spirit will raise up a standard against your enemies. That means the enemies, we have heard the word of God that tells us the weapon will form, but it cannot prosper. We know that there's a barrier. Even when, when the enemy when had, was given permission from God to, tempt, to test Job, he still had a barrier. He still had, Job still had protection. Although he lost everything, including his children and all of his resources, there was still a protection from God when, he, when God had given the enemy the ability to test and tempt him and take everything from him. He said, but you cannot touch his soul. No matter what God allows, the enemy to do in our lives, we still have protection. And we have to believe that there is a protective capacity, a protective dimension of the Holy Spirit, which is within us. And sometimes that just looks like a check in our spirit. When we come upon someone, when our discernment is on, when we come upon someone or something is happening, like, oh, I don't, I, I don't know about that. that. That check in our spirit can be a protective measure. When we are going, when we are going about our day and under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit tells us to turn left when the GPS or we know to turn right. 
and Holy Spirit tell us to turn the other way, that can be a protective measure because turning the way that we wanted to go could have prevented, there was an accident or something waiting to, for our demise or something to destroy us or even something just to hinder or back us up or stop us, our momentum. There is a protective element, a protective dimension to being filled with the Holy Spirit. When we are fearful, when we are fearful of some things, the Holy Spirit will let us know the comforter is with us. Holy Spirit will arise. With, you don't have to fear. Fear not for I am with you. God told us that. Fear not for I am with you always. I will never leave nor forsake you. I will be with you until the end of the age. So we don't have to entertain fear in the face of dangers because we have, when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, he will comfort us. He will keep us. He will protect us from all things. Even when we are able to, well, because we are living in the spirit and we can see in the realm of the spirit, we don't just see the good things in the realm of the spirit. We see the negative and the dark things in the realm of the spirit also. But when Holy Spirit is full and active and entire within us, we don't have to fear the darkness that we see in the realm of the spirit. We have the confidence to know that Jesus who lives on the inside of us, the Holy Spirit who is in us can speak to that darkness and tell it where to go. That's the confidence that comes as well. There's a confident dimension of the Holy Spirit within us because he is inside of us and because he is the word made flesh, because he is all powerful, because he is God. We can have confidence to know that because he raised Jesus from the dead, we also can be raised up out of every situation. No matter how dark it seems, no matter how hard it seems, no matter how fearful it seems, we know there's a power working within us that can raise us up. And even if things don't turn out the way we want them to, we know that they are turning out for our good and to the glory of God in heaven. Because some, you know, we all want things to turn out the way we want them to. We want all things to turn out well. We have an expectation of the way our finite minds want things to turn out and want things to happen. But we, our mind is not, our, our ways are not the ways of God. Our thoughts are not the thoughts of God. So they're not even as high as he is. He said, my ways are higher than those and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. So the way God thinks about a thing and the way God wants to do a thing is going to be much bigger and much much higher than the way our, our finite minds can understand. And even if it doesn't turn out the way we want to, we have to be willing to surrender, submit, and yield to the will of God for our lives and say, no, that the sovereign God who has already formed all of our days and, from the, and knows the end from the beginning has a plan for us that is good to bring us to an expected end. And no matter what it looks like, it is for our good and for his glory. We've got to submit to the will of God. We don't want to do that all the time. We want to submit to the will of God when it feels good for us. We want to submit to the will of God when it's convenient for us. We want to submit to the will of God when, when we think it's going to turn out the way we want to, but we have to submit to the will of God regardless. The nevertheless, we have to have that nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done in our mouth, in our spirit, not just sometimes, but all the time. Every single day when we are praying unto God, our father, we have to say, we, when we are taking our plans and, and our dreams and our aspirations and our visions before God, when we write them down and, and we are praying to God for them, we have, when we get to the end of the thing, of the end of that prayer, or the end of our list, we have to make sure that we still say, nevertheless, Lord, not my will, but thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, because everything about us, every one of the plans of God for us already existed in heaven. So it just have to, we got to bring it from heaven down here to earth. It already exists. We've got to bring it down here. And it's already in eternity. We've got to bring it into time, not in our time, but in his time. There is also a destructive capacity or dimension to the Holy Ghost, which is that consuming fire, that Holy Ghost fire that will burn up everything that is, we call the unlike God that is within us. It'll burn up the uh, the, the wicked ones and to, 
to destroy the every work of darkness that is coming against us, that destructive dimension of God, of the Holy Spirit that will come in and, 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 and annihilate every enemy against you. It's the destructive dimension of the Holy Spirit that is also down on the inside of us that we can call forward and speak to those mountains and tell it to move and get out of our way. It is the destructive dimension of the Holy Spirit which is down on the inside of us that we can speak to a thing and it shall happen. That we can call for the consuming fire to come and burn it up. We, we can call forth uh, 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 for for fire to come down, but we've got to be also careful because it will burn up everything in us that is not like God. When we say burn up everything that is unlike you, God, that means with us too. We can't just be calling for the Holy Ghost fire of God to burn up everything around us and not ask him to burn up in us because remember, the Holy Ghost fire is on the inside of us. And in order for it to come out, it's got to come through us. And in order to come through us, it's going to pass by something. And we've got to, there's something on the inside of us called sin that has to be burnt up so that when we come before the people of God, when we come before God, we can come to them purely. We can come to them entire. We can come to them and God, Jesus, see us through the blood of God. We can come to a place where we are more and more like Christ every single day. That is how we die to our flesh and ask the Holy Spirit to consume it and to burn up our flesh so that we're not operating in the things of the flesh, but we are operating in the things of the spirit. There's a judgment part of the dimension of God that came at that judgment of God came upon Ananias and Sapphira's wife when Peter said that they lied on the Holy Ghost. Too many people in the body of Christ who know this scripture, know this story, hear what happened to Ananias and Sapphira. They lied on the Holy Ghost and the judgment of God came upon them. Yet and still, people, believers, the saints of God are still to this day lying on the Holy Ghost. Saying to God, Holy Ghost said, God said, knowing darn well they, he didn't say, they didn't hear that. God didn't say it. that was them. And think that they're not going to face any type of judgment. We've got to be careful that we do not lie on the Holy Ghost. And think that there will be no judgment that will come upon us. We cannot try to take a plank out of somebody else's eye with the great big dagger and plank in our own eye and don't think that something that God is going not going to deal with us in that in a judgmental way. God is a just God. We have to understand yes he's loving, yes he's protective, yes he's a comforter, yes he's all of these wonderful things but he's also a God of judgment and of wrath. When Paul and Barnabas were invited to the home of the governor of Patmos to come because he wanted to hear the word of the Lord, uh, uh, the, the sorcerer Elamus, 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 he got in the way and tried to tell the governor not to pay them any attention. And the word of God says, Paul being filled with the Holy Ghost, saw him and said to him, called him, uh, you are full of mischief and deceit. You are a child of the devil. Behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind. And immediately he went blind. And Paul said, you will not see for a season. And immediately he went blind. And he was going around looking for somebody that was going to give him his sight back. That's judgment. We cannot get in the way of someone hearing the word of God. When we become a stumbling block, when we become intentional because we want to be the person to give the gospel to this person and we don't, or, or we want, we think that the person that some is given the word of God or the gospel of Jesus Christ to someone else isn't fitting enough, that their lifestyle don't line up enough. We don't know who God's going to use. We can't say that I'm the only one who can do that. We see pro prophecy in part and prophesy in part. The Jesus said, the, the, the spirit of God will fall on everyone. Jesus said, told all of us, all of us, go ye therefore into the world and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. He didn't say, it, all, all we have to do is believe in the word of Jesus Christ. Accept Jesus, believe in his word, live according to his statutes and commandments. Go ye therefore into all the world and preach the gospel. 
not just the pastor, not just the prophet, not just the apostle, not just the evangelist or the elders or the teachers. All of us have that mandate. Therefore, all of us have to make sure that we are moving and operating by the spirit of God and living in the spirit of God so that when our, our, discernment, our discernment is heightened enough to know what part I'm supposed to say and what part I'm not supposed to say. One plant, one water, God gives the increase. We might just be the planter. You might just be the waterer, but we're never the one to give the increase. Too many of us want to be the one to plant water and give the increase. We don't have the capacity to give the increase. God will never allow us to take glory from him. That is not what we're supposed to be doing. God will never allow us to have his glory. And when we get in a place of pride and ego, God will deal with that. The judgmental dimension of God will deal with that. There are many, 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 many preachers, people who are, are given the gospel, people who, are, who have been not sent or called, but just went, who are under the weight of this, 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 this assignment of the gospel and under a weight of something that they were not meant to handle. And they are dying young. People are dying young. Preachers. People who are bishops, apostles, priests, oh, they are dying before the age of 50. I've seen many of them. And we just because their names are not big and they, they're not known very far or very, you know, very well, doesn't mean that God is not taking care and cleaning up his church. When God said he, Jesus is coming back for a, a bride without a spot or a wrinkle, coming back for church without a spot or a wrinkle, that means he has to clean it up. He's ironing out all of his stuff right now. He's ironing it all out right now. We've got to be, he's coming for a remnant. And we want to make sure that we are in the remnant. Wide is the gate and narrow is the way. We've got to, we've got to make sure that we are in position to be a part of the remnant. We have to make sure that we are looking for, it says few find the narrow. The narrow gate, the narrow way. We gotta make sure that we're looking for it. Because you can't find something you're not looking for. We've got to make sure that we are intentional about what it is that we're doing, how it is we're serving, how it is that we are living. Some ways that we can live by the Spirit is by making daily and consistent decisions to be open and have an open heart and mind. When it comes to the things of God, to the word of God, and to the things of God, we've got to repent from our sins often. We've got to pray and seek the face of God with others, with ourselves, for ourselves. We've got to read the word and study the word of God for ourselves, set aside time to really get in the scriptures on our own, not just when we come to Bible study, Kingdom Academy. We've got to cultivate some silence, cultivate a time in our day where we just sit in the presence of God and say nothing. Just to invite his presence, to feel him, see him, hear him, and sense him. We've got to yield to the word of God and to obey the commands of God, to obey the word of God. We've got to put God first. This means making a decision daily and consistently to put God and the things of God first. And we have to be open to correction. Many people don't like to be corrected, but it's when we are corrected that we are able to be realigned. Correction means that there's something that's out of alignment that needs to be realigned. We need to be realigned, recalibrated. We need to make sure we're not in error, but we are in truth and we are in righteousness. And we have to respond with kindness when others are going through situations that seem difficult and they're not responding the way we want to. Or when people aren't responding to us when we come to give them the gospel of Jesus Christ and they're not responding the way they would, we would want them to respond to fluff up our own ego. And to puff up our own pride, we've got to still show kindness and humility. This is how we live with the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. This is how 
we've come to a place where we are, we can be empowered and, and fulfill our purpose and operate in all of the dimensions of the Holy Ghost that is with resident within us. If you are hearing this message and you do not know this Jesus or this Holy Ghost that we're talking about, we offer, I extend the opportunity to surrender your life to Jesus today. I offer Christ to you today so that you can come into the family of God and you can get to know this. You can be filled with the Holy Spirit so that you too can be activated and empowered to do all the things that I laid out in this message today so that you too can live life abundantly. You too can live victoriously. You too can be protected and empowered and, and experience the love of God like never before. I offer Christ to you today, my brother or my sister. It is very simple. If you have never invited Jesus Christ into your heart, all you have to do is say, Lord, I recognize that I am a sinner. Jesus, I open up my heart and receive you into my life to be Lord and Savior of my life. I believe that you died for the cross, on the cross, and that you were raised three days later from the dead for the remission of my sins. I believe that you are the Son of God who was slain for the remission of my sins. I invite you into my heart. I invite you into my life. I recognize that I am a sinner in need of a savior. All you have to do is confess those things with your mouth and then believe in your heart those things that you have confessed and you too, just like that, are saved. And if you have accepted Jesus Christ today or if you have were a backslider and you are coming back into the family of God, you still can say the same thing and just come back home to Jesus. We offer him to you today. You can connect with us. Let us know that you have accepted Jesus as Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you are a first time believer, if you are uh, uh, coming back into the family, connect with us on our website. Connect with us on our Facebook page and our YouTube page and let us know. And we can, eat, if you're not, because we are virtual, you can still continue to, to join us and be a part of us because we are still virtual right now. So no matter where you are, you have a family of believers who are looking, who are waiting to welcome you into this family of God. And then it, we, we get to the point where we're no longer virtual, we can still connect you to someone wherever you are, to a pastor in a Bible believing and teaching church that you can connect with. We love you. We And God loves you more than any of us ever could. And we hope and pray that from this day forward, because you have made the best decision of your life, you will begin to see the things that we are talking about as you learn and you grow and you work out your own soul salvation with fear and trembling. God bless you. I pray that you take this decision sincerely and strongly. And then you begin to do the work because this thing with Jesus, this life with Christ is a work, but it's a good work. It is a good work to be done for the betterment and the empowerment of your own life. And so that you too can be a part of the, the body of Christ to empower and expand the kingdom of God. Not just belong to it, but help to empower it and to expand it and move it forward. Amen. God, we bless you for this word today. We thank you for reminding us, oh God. That when we have, because we have Holy Spirit resident down within us, oh God, there are things that we need to do to activate them. And that there are things that we can, ways that we can live and be and do that we can only do by the power of the Holy Spirit. God, we thank you right now, oh God, for reminding us that there are different dimensions of you in us. We thank you, Lord God, for supernatural love and joy and guidance and for teaching and for unity and for empowerment. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for all that you are to us. We make the decision today to surrender and submit to the will and your guidance. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. We pray amen. Amen. I turn this service back over to Evangelist Savage. Amen. God bless you. 
Amen. Amen. You already putting your hands together for the word today. For we bless the word today, God's word. Now we are clapping our hands for Evangelist Lisa. We thank Evangelist for the word today. It didn't sound like you was tired. Didn't sound like your voice was weak. But we, <laughs> but we thank the Lord for you. And power for a purpose because we have greater works to do. And you notice it said we and not one. It said we. So it means we as in poor. So that means everybody, everybody got something to do. Not just one person. She said everybody. She said it's a we thing and not a me thing and not an I thing. And not a you thing, but a we thing. And so we got to get busy and doing the work of God. We are empowered to do the work of God. So what about it? What are you going to do? <laughs> we can no longer sit still. So what are you going to do? You got to get up from here. Amen. Amen. That's a good word to plant an offering. That's a good word to plant our seeds today. And so gather up your offering, your tithes, and pre-plant today on good ground, fertile ground. Because you know on fertile ground, seeds grow. When the, the ground is burned, ain't nothing going to happen in that ground. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I don't care how much you water, there's nothing going to happen. But when the ground is fertile, seeds will grow. Amen. Amen. So we pray and we reach out and, and there's always ways that you can reach out to the Katie and my family. If you want to plant your seeds, know that you're planting on good ground and know that your seeds, Lord God, will sprout out and go far. We ask you to connect with us on Facebook. You can connect at, at Cash App. We take all kinds. We still take checks. <laughs> so you connect with our our our, our, our um, Facebook page. You can connect with anybody here online. We can also take cash. We will connect with you to even get your money. So however you want to give, we thank you for your blessing. We thank you for your tithing this morning. We pray over the offering. Lord God, we, we thank you, Lord God, because you are our strength. Lord God, you are our source, Lord God. And we give it back to you, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God, that the sort of seeds are being planted on fertile ground this morning, Lord God. We ask you, God, to bless each hand that is planting, Lord God, and even the hands, Lord God, that don't have it today, Lord God. But give them a, the desire to be able to plant the next time. And we thank you and we praise you and we give you honor for all that is being planted even in our lives. In Jesus' precious name, amen, amen, amen. We bless the Lord for the word today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. What a great word. It's always a good time when we can come together and worship God and hear the word, the true word of the living God. Not sugar-coated. We don't have time for anything to be sugar-coated right now. Uh, it, them, them days are over, sugarcoating and tiptoeing and on, on God's word. No, no, we are not doing that over in this camp. So no, when you come in this camp, you're going to get the true word of God. So come on, bring everything you got <laughs> over in this camp because we got shovels for it. Amen, amen, amen. A good word, a good word is always good to see our family online, our Central American family, evangelist, Allie, and missionary as she's doing the work of the Lord in Central America. Please continue to lift her up as she go about doing the work of the Lord and spreading God's word over there. So we praise you and keep her lifted up. And at this time, we are turn it back over to our one and only apostle. <laughs> He said, Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Evangelist Lenita. Praise God. Great service today. Great word of the Lord today. 
uh, from Evangelist Lisa. Great word of the Lord today, empowered with a purpose. And I think this is the day and hour she said, and uh, said so many great things uh, in the message. Um, but as the body of Christ, this is the day and the hour that we need to be fully persuaded. Hallelujah. That we have been empowered by God for a, a purpose, an eternal purpose that must be revealed in the earth. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I was reminded as she was talking of the scripture in Acts chapter one, he says, but you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Amen. That is the, that's how we become endued with the power. The Holy Spirit is the power of God and the purpose of the power. He says, so that you will be witnesses unto me. Hallelujah. Both in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and, and even to the uttermost part of the earth. Amen. And so when we when we we realize that we have been empowered with a purpose, uh, the reason is Jesus said in uh Luke 10, 1, when he appointed the 70, he empowered them and he appointed them to send them everywhere he wanted to go. And um, as, as uh, Evangelist Lisa was talking well, on your job, in the marketplace, wherever you go is where God wants to be. Hallelujah. And so the Holy Spirit in you and I, the Bible says he's um, Christ in you, the hope of glory. He's not only the hope and the expectation, but he is the fulfillment, hallelujah, of glory on the inside of us. And you do not have to fear with the Holy Ghost on the inside, hallelujah. Okay, I'm not gonna re-preach, glory to God, but I'm stirred up, amen, and uh, great word of the Lord, because it's the time that we as the body of Christ need to know uh, that God has empowered us to do the works of Jesus Christ. We have to shift from talking it to walking in the demonstration, the power of God, the Holy Spirit um, is the power of God. He said in um, Ephesians 2, that when we were dead in sins, the Holy Spirit quickened us or made us alive unto Christ. And it is out of that life, in that life we live, and from that life we live and we do the works of God in the earth. And so great word of the Lord today, great encouragement and reminder to the body of Christ today that listen, no matter who you are, where you are in the body of Christ, what position you are, you're in the body. Hallelujah. The hand is empowered to work just as much as the eye of the body is empowered to work, like the ear of the body is empowered to work. Every part of the body has been empowered to do a specific work. And so it's time to be about the work of the Lord today. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Want to again echo um, our greetings and salutations again to Evangelist Alley and the Saints over in Central America. Um, and I uh, also want to uh, give God praise for all those who are viewing us live by Facebook. We greet you in Jesus' joy. Thank you for connecting to us, uh, with us today to worship in the Lord. Amen. We do not take that for granted. The Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And so if you've connected with us today, we trust and believe that God has ordered your steps to connect with us today for what God wanted to release and declare and do today. And so to God be all the glory and the honor and praise. We want to give God praise as we acknowledge our pastor, Prophet Natalie Thompson. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. As a great, uh, great, um, our great pastor, great woman of God, um, even on this weekend as we celebrated the life um, of her mom, amen, who's in glory, praise God. That's why we live. So that on this this day, on the day, the time when we no longer are in the earth, when we stand before the Lord, we want to hear him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of of the Lord. Praise God. Amen. And we give God praise. Amen. For this, the crusade. Amen. For what God did um, in the crusade. Um, Prophet Kern hosted um, the crusade. Baltimore for Jesus. Glory to God. And so we give God praise for the signs, miracles, and wonders and the word of the Lord and demonstration that was uh, manifested in the gathering. Amen. As uh, it was said earlier, one plants, one waters, it is God who gives the increase. And I want to encourage somebody, listen, 
uh, you have a word of the Lord and promises of the Lord, amen, and even prayers that you have uh, lifted before the Lord, uh, just understand, uh, you know, I, I take this occasion every time I see physical rain in the earth, I take that as an, a, a physical example of what Isaiah 55 says. Uh, that rain is always an indication that a seed has been planted somewhere because the purpose of rain is to water a seed to facilitate growth. Hallelujah. And so every good word that God spoke in your life, amen, God's going to bring it to pass. Glory be to God. So so give I give God praise for all that he's doing. Thank you to all KDMI. Listen, I want to say this on behalf of Prophet Nat and Deacon Pam and for the family. Listen, we love you all with our life. Thank you to everyone uh, for how you supported and showed your love um, as the uh, Prophet Nat and Deacon Pam and the family um, celebrated the life of Mother Bolden. Thank you all for your support, for your love. Amen. And, um, and peradventure, those that are on Facebook that have joined us, we thank you for friends and family that came alongside. And we pray the blessing and the favor of the Lord be upon you as you stood as support in prayer. How have you supported prayers um, and gifts of love and uh, sharing uh, of love? We, we give God praise for you and we pray that God will bless and uh, reciprocate you for your love. Hallelujah. As we get ready to take our leave, amen, and just to decree the word of the Lord over us uh, today, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us one and all forever and ever. Amen. I praise God. So as you go, have an amazing day in God, and may you always prosper, excel, and ex ex expand, amen, as you go. Have a great and blessed day. We love you. This is just, this is just the way. Like here, refreshing. It's playing now unfolding. The time of your great blessing. Thank you, Derek Dennis. Come on. promise of our king to do exceedingly abundantly above what you ask for me put it in the house expect love put your hands on it y'all come on y'all can't you say expect anybody expecting great things Great blessings.